following story is based on actual events. Like seeing these lady aliens dancing, I'm just now realizing that this movie's opening credits give away most of its plot. Dude, where's my car? Went to the Mission Impossible School of Expositing Your Adventures in the opening credits before the movie even gets started. Ashton looks totally different in this movie. Look at how he has transformed for this role. And I think he wasn't even nominated for an award. I'm not sure how much money it took to create CGI swimsuit model cat, but it wasn't enough. Balloon art attached to a stick would have been preferred. Also, it makes me sad to think that some people masturbated to this CGI cat. There is nothing about Jesse and Chester's character that gives any confidence the gnome, elf, dog, mug, and kitchen pottery should be intact. Their home is the perfect example of where ceramics go to die, the death of underappreciated collectibles. Everything should be chipped or smashed. Sharp eyes will note the pudding cup that suddenly appears in the plant and think that it's a clever attempt at foreshadowing rather than an overlooked detail during a continuity check. How do you know, Gene? I thought he was your friend. No, no, I don't know him. Look, I have been stoned a bunch. A lot. A bunch lot. But I've never been so stoned as to take in a new roommate and then forget about it. I realize movie stoned has got to be exaggerated and shit, but goddamn. Is it possible that we got so wasted last night that we bought a lifetime supply of pudding? Kids, that's a month's supply at most for hungry party boys. Okay, a month and a half. Still not a lifetime. Also, punch drunk love. Movie fails to give us the backstory on what these two chuckle f did to earn the trophies in the background. There are a lot of things that make me cringe in this movie, but this massive lizard cramped in a habitat that isn't nearly the right size will take the cake. Does it even have a heat lamp? It can barely turn around, you f***ing assholes. Open up, you goose -wreckers! Mr. Pizzicoli aggressively tries the doorknob, but the door doesn't open. Chester tells him it is open, and it takes another 25 seconds for Mr. Pizzicoli to enter. This is only annoying because this doorknob is a 25 second asshole bit doesn't repeat itself when they leave the house later. And considering this movie repeats every joke at least twice, it's a missed opportunity for a fun gag. 30 pizzas didn't get delivered last night. Did you go home, fall asleep in your pizza-based oil-stained work outfit, then get a call about stolen pizzas from the... Wait, who the f*** called you about the stolen pizza? The cops? Anyway, you then roll out of bed in the same outfit and hustle over to the home of a couple of stoners you employ so you can blame them for the pizza loss? Surely neither of these stoners is a member of management, so this isn't really on them. But also, change your damn clothes, pizza man. Look, it's an elephant! What? <laughs> That's ridiculous. They don't own a cat. Look, a unicorn! <laughs> That's ridiculous. They also do not own a dog. I know you've been embezzling my pizza, and I will catch you eventually. But I will not buy security cameras or any shit like that, which could help me prove this allegation. I swear to God, you will never deliver pizzas! This is like if someone got stoned and wrote a screenplay about stoners, but their knowledge of stoners comes exclusively from the movie Half-Baked. Dude, where's my car? Roll a joint and smoke it because that is the only way this movie might make you slightly chuckle because it is so dumb that losing brain cells should be a warning before the film started during the credits. Aha. Your eyes you must close. Nope. Eat shit, dude. I will not trust any magician, shaman, or priest that makes me close my eyes before they do their thing. <laughs> Being this entertained by animal abuse. Nelson stands up to stop the wind chimes from chiming in the wind, even though Nelson chose those chimes to hang in the wind right over the weed cabana where they would surely chime. I suppose the five O's in food are on purpose, but to what end? Stone people don't usually start seeing extra syllables. Do these filmmakers understand the difference between weed and, like, acid? And then? No, and then. I, I, that's, that's all I want. And then? I want to know the story behind this person who can't stop saying and then. Did that start today at this exact second with Jesse? I'm assuming so, because if they did this to everyone, there would never be a completed order, and the line would be too long to wait in. So why now? Why Jesse? Attacking a drive through speaker as though that will affect the workers inside. Well, I'm not the one that called the Dalai Lama f Red alert! Red alert! That word is not acceptable. Fuck! It's Christy Boner! Naming a character Christy Boner. Christy Swanson is not my girlfriend in this or any other movie that Christy Swanson is in. Do you remember you had that really nice suitcase full of money? <laughs> a suitcase full of money? So this is The Hangover, years before The Hangover, and with weed instead of someone slipping Mickeys to all of his friends on purpose. And the more I talk, the less these movies actually have in common. Don't you remember giving me $500 to show you my hoo-hoos? $500 to see hoo-hoos? God, we were deprived in the 90s. Then again, maybe we appreciated hoo-hoos even more back then. Now I can casually type hoo-hoo into my phone and purchase my own for less than $500. Guys like you can never score with a chick like this. That is your opening line when she literally just was forcing Jesse's hand to clasp her breast. Why not start with the admittedly more generic, hey, that's my girl, bro. All the assholes eating their food and watching this exchange as if it were entertaining. 
I don't know, guys. I really think that these public trash cans would have the layer growing on the inside. You know, the thick ooze of many beverages sprinkled with cigarette ash and crusty food chunks that is solidified to the interior walls of the container. Even though Jesse and Chester are the devolved Garth and Wayne, there's no way they would be dumb enough to stay inside these cans. They do have survival instincts. Also, is anyone gonna check on Christy? She was just strong-armed into rejoining the Testoster Squad as if she were an ornament on their dashboard. Though she's perfectly capable of taking care of herself. She was outnumbered. Chester checks his pocket for the first time just now. This matchbook is the size of a palm pilot, is fuzzier than a carpet, and must smell like sex musk. Basically every sensor would be sensing its presence in his pants far before now. I would send the strip club being open at breakfast time, but then people would flood the comments with this one strip club they know of that is open 24 hours a day, and I just don't want to deal with that shit. So I'm gonna send the real life strip clubs that are open at breakfast because that shit is bleak. No way we were here last night. Forget last night, there's no way you were here now. Walking half a sidewalk square made them tire out earlier. And now we're supposed to believe they walked here from MapQuest knows where. Look at the tuggles on that kitten. Look at the tuggles on that kitten. So to be clear, these women see Chester's present, abandon their dancing poles, get into wet tea outfits, and assemble on the main stage to douse themselves in water, thereby revealing that they do indeed have nipples, then squeegee the floor and change into bikinis? Pace yourself. We may only have a few minutes of screen, time to fill, but you cannot keep up this pace all evening. Jesus. You're, uh, I'm a gender challenged male. Oh my. Adding 10 cents for this whole thing here with the making trans people seem gross and evil. Jesus. Last night I had the two of you sneak as sukas have stolen money out of the club. So if they aren't super popular at the strip club for throwing money around, then what did they do that made all these workers here love them? Why is anyone clapping at all? If it wasn't the money, there was nothing Chester and Jesse could have done to garner this much sustained clapping. I'm an American and this is too much clapping. We ate all the dark ones because we know you guys don't like us. <laughs> dark ones are the only ones we do like. Honestly, the fact that these two f nuts were ever able to secure girlfriends at all is the biggest sin in this movie. Neither of these girlfriends alone or combined are capable of throwing even one of these dumbass boyfriends into the air. These two leave their seated position, then stand up awkwardly to put on their shoes? There's literally no reason to do this unless they wanted to be kidnapped. The Continuum Transfunctioner is a very mysterious and powerful device. Great, thanks, super helpful. You're right on time, uh, you pick up special suits. That's mathematically impossible for them to show up here and now at the exact time they set last night while stoned out of their minds. Go f*** yourself, movie. What about mine? Dude, what does mine say? <laughs> Sweet. This goes on for some week. Ooh, can't hug for fear it'll make me look gay. Typical 90s. What's that? This came out in 2000? Fine, but that's a technicality. This movie is 90s as f***. Dude, we bought cell phones. <laughs> this joke only works in between the pre-cell years and the cell phone years. It literally went from only rich people have them in their cars and they are wired to you can sign up at the movie theater for no money down and walk away with an activated flip phone in like 17 months. And that is the window this movie lives in. Risking getting sunscreen in your mouth for a shot joke. Did that paperwork also tell them where their leased car was magically parked last night? Because they immediately find it. Being disgusted by brotherly love. But who's Johnny Pot Smoker? That's my alter ego. Somehow, well into the night last night, after these two had a suitcase full of cash, they arrive at a dealership that allows them to lease a car under a false name. I can believe that Mr. Lee's tailoring shop may be open late, but a car leasing company that doesn't care who takes a Mercedes? The Continuum Transfunctioner is a very mysterious and powerful device. And its mystery is only exceeded by its power. I'm sending anyone who watched this movie and thought the description of the Continuum Transfunctioner was a fun euphemism for their I didn't exactly expect subtlety from this movie, but god damn. Also, the movie robs us of seeing an alien get brain freeze. But for the love of god, they're offering us oral pleasure. He says this as though oral pleasure isn't a sliding scale. You guys picked the wrong transsexual stripper to screw with. F***ing Christ. Last night, your car was spotted leaving the scene of a major drug deal. Is that car owned by two people? I can't quite figure out why the police are interviewing the guys at the same time. One of our officers made the wrong identification. Yeah, uh, that, I'm... That was me. I'm sorry about that one, fellas. All right, we have a thick glasses equals hilarity sin for sure, but we also have to send the police for literally hauling people in for questioning based on this one officer's eyewitness account. Damn! Damn? You forgot to lift your hands to catch the dough and all you have to say is damn? As if that was possibly going any other way. We are looking for Jesse and Chester. What? You were literally talking to them and they conferred privately and then you had disappeared. First off, you were the ones that had them and lost them. Second off, you already found them once on your own, so why do you need help now? 
So far, these aliens have selected adults to speak to, and here they switch to a child. The only reason this happens is because the person who wrote this scene thought it would be funny to have a blind child touch a woman's breasts. And then, other adults read that idea in the script and agreed it should happen. And then, many more people saw this scene unfold during filming without raising any concerns. And then, the editors kept it in. And then, and then... Those double-crossing sexy, sexy sluts! Man, Chester leaps to the conclusion that the alien women told Tommy about the continuum thingy. What if it had been the slutty van cult? Or maybe Tommy heard it from any number of slutty people on the public street, where the whatever um was discussed for the first time. Don't slut and jump to slut conclusion so sluttily. What? I thought we were just using the word slut fearlessly. We are the keepers of the continuum transfunctioner. Fucking hell. And now, a dog doing what it always does outside, peeing on things. Huh? It's over. Took you long enough. Now that we know that we've been sucky boyfriends, we can change. Yes, I can change, I can change. I know I've been a dirty little bastard. He tagged it for auction and it was sold this afternoon. Do you realize how many stars need to align for them to get so wasted they lose their car, but before even 24 hours have passed, the car has been impounded and auctioned off? It's a bazillion, a bazillion stars. This asshat gets his arm stuck in the window, but it's only because he refuses to acknowledge the existence of angles and keeps trying to pull out elbow first. Also, and not unrelated, my college girlfriend broke up with me because I denied the existence of angles and tried to pull out elbow first. I want to send that Jeff would have been discovered by the aliens who seemingly hitched a ride with Jesse and Chester in the previous scene because they would have sat on him. But on the off chance aliens wouldn't recognize how suspicious a lumpy breathing seat would be, I'll pivot to the next clear sin, which is incapacitating the driver of a vehicle that you are currently in while their brake foot is the only thing keeping you from rolling into an intersection. Get dressed. We're going to the big house. Okay. Why were they stripped of their clothing if they were going to be given it right back? This is creepy. It's like a country music video. Nothing about this is like a country music video. It's like they thought these two actors could literally say any combination of words and it would pay off. What are you, deaf? Using deaf as an insult aside, Jesse was silently mouthing everything to Chester, so being deaf wouldn't have mattered anyway. Likely would have helped with the lip reading. Soon we will leave this lame planet and fly through outer space with cool aliens who like us. Honestly, this sounds pretty rad. I just want to point out that there's a person standing by this curtain whose only job is to dramatically swoosh the curtain open for the girlfriends have been kidnapped reveal. Normally we would never resort to violence, but we are dealing with the continuum transfunctioner after all. Normally I wouldn't make you eat my literal asshole out, well, but we are dealing with an unusually stupid fucking movie after all. Don't worry girls, we will save you. They're wrapped in flimsy bubble wrap, they could easily save themselves. I'm sensing something very Canadian about this place. That's Canadiest. Oh! Neither of them breaks any bones or necks here. Dude, they're everywhere. Dude, they're everywhere to me. And when I close my eyes, I'll stretch, I see. But also, no, they're in front of you and behind you. There are many options remaining, should you choose a directional option other than north or south. I have so many questions about how this bird has managed to dive straight through the soft top of the car. Where is its body? They can't see the body through any windows, so is it standing on the car? Is it suspended Cirque du Soleil style from above the car? Why is it so focused on intruders? Are ostriches apex predators in this universe? Lucky for you, I am an honorable man. I'm not blaming any one person, but every single half-assed stab this movie takes at comedy is painfully unfunny. That can get up to, well, an average speed of 27 miles per hour. Ah! This is absolutely correct! Sure, it's cute that Chester remembers this highly specific detail because of a National Geographic TV binge, but how does it make sense for Pierre to be willing to release a perceived ostrich poacher just because he knows an ostrich fact? Wouldn't ostrich poachers know a lot about the animals they poach? Especially how fast they run to get away from the poaching? Email me, okay? Freakincage.com. Asking someone to email you and then giving a website rather than an email. Also, FreakinCage.com is currently available to be purchased for just over $3,000. I find it sinful that no one has bought this site and done something funny with it. I guess comedy really did come to this movie to die. Who are you? This is my boyfriend, Patty. <sighs> Captain Stew tickets! Awesome! Oh. Yeah, going on my knowledge of arcade tickets, you have enough here to buy a ring pop. Oh, jelly bean! I've seen anyone who thought the snake in a can bit was funny, which is one sin. Only one person found it funny, and that person wrote this into the script. Oh, come on, a donut shop would be open well into the night, but Uncle Nakamura's? Who needs to learn Japanese after normal business hours? Why are we holding two-hour courses and printing certifications? What is happening? They've got the continuum transfunctioner. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, to my stepdad's pickup truck. Leaving several open flames unattended. Smokey the Bear is gonna get you for this. You got me the first nine, but not number ten. Where is this child's parent? Why has she been allowed to play with a stranger? Now, release our girlfriends. First, give up the transfunctioner. First, you release the girlfriends. 
fucking movie has one joke, and it's repetition, and they use it over and over and over again. There's absolute madness happening in the main floor of this arcade, including five hot girls dressed in black, alien Will Ferrells, and nearly a dozen folks dressed in fucking bubble wrap. Yet everyone at this arcade not involved in the chase for the Continental Transmographer is utterly blissful just playing their foosball and their video games. I know the cube is the coaxial transportainment thing, but no one this stupid would ever accidentally themselves upon the solution. This thing is mathematically driven. It's not a guessing game. No, we are the keepers of the Continuum Transfunctioner. They want to destroy the universe. This is like that moment in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, when there are two Kirks and they both say to shoot the other one. This is later echoed in X-Men, when there are two Wolverines and Cyclops hesitates. There's also literally dozens of other not-me-it's-them moments in film history, and maybe you could argue its inclusion here is an homage, but we all know that isn't true. It's just the laziest movie ever made. How do we figure out which ones are the true keepers of the Continuum Transfunctioner? Knowing you guys, pin the tail on the donkey, probably. Only having four skee-ball machines in your arcade. Skee-ball for life, yo! I suppose there wasn't much research that went into this promotion, considering hole-in-ones aren't extremely rare. This place has probably given out four or five lifetime supplies of goddamn pudding in recent history, and had to convert the back game room to a temperature-controlled pudding storage unit. And yes, I want to see that movie. Open on the boss's office, pudding cups and drug baggies everywhere. This guy has pictures of the people who have won on his wall with a little calendar ticking off days past. Cut to Jesse and Chester, unaware they're drugged by pudding. They're having tripped out alien adventures along with several other families in town. Their lives intersect with tripping strippers, paranoid Pierre, and Japanese educators that stay up way too late. The cops are too dumb to pick up on the truth, and as long as the winners don't remember that they can collect more pudding, the boss can make ends meet. If only he would just remember to take down the fucking banner and end the goddamn promotion. Eating the bullies, when everyone knows that bully meat is toxic, even to giant Voltron alien beings made up of smaller alien beings. <laughs> Shrugging nonchalantly when your boyfriend is murdered in front of your eyes. Given how much screen time this guy had in the title credits, I would have assumed he'd play a more interesting role in the movie. But as it turns out, he's just hanging out in a space onesie, casually smoking outside a kid arcade with a bunch of balloons. And that's it. I want to send this because her underwear changes, but I don't want to send this because then I'd have to admit that I totally looked at her underwear when she stood up a second ago. Why the f*** is the pizza man running for his life from the giant female alien but still carrying and protecting the 10 pizzas he brought here? I can't reach it! Deep in your consciousness you must look! F***ing why? This isn't even an Earth-based device, it's alien! Why should it require a human being to look into its consciousness before it works? I want to kill you! Honestly, now that I think about it, I'm pretty disappointed that a large space alien would have pink bunnies as their undie print. Is there nothing more interesting out there in the universe? The bully has been humiliated and his girlfriend has moved on. Now, just in case that wasn't enough, let's have a dog pee on him. Comedy like this writes itself. We'll go over to the twins' house. And then? And then we'll give them their anniversary gifts. So the day is supposedly restarted, but all the events from the previous evening of partying are still accurate. The only difference now is that the dudes have their car and a fuzzy matchbook in their possession. That's it. Forget understanding how reversing time doesn't also mean they have the end of the world doohickey again. Forget that they have a locker with around $200,000 waiting for them out there somewhere. Forget that Pierre has kidnapped another person without detection. Forget it all. It's for the best. Dude, there's your car. We will never have an explanation about where the f this goddamn car has been for the entire length of the movie. I realize the joke is that they paid to spell out I heart you instead of using a heart emoji, but I am hella bothered by this stray f***ing eyelash just casually chilling right above. <laughs> You guys are great boyfriends. <laughs> Lies. So the hero's final reward is alien technology that grows their girlfriend's breasts in size dramatically? What the f*** is that sh Perpetually broke-ass stoners somehow have enough money for personalized license plates. I'm not giving this piece of sh movie any credit for including outtakes during the credits, even though every movie should have outtakes during the credits. Also, I can't play it for you, but Smash Mouth. Soon we will leave this lame planet and fly through outer space. This is like the apex of the vortex of joint engineering. Would you like to try our new beef and cheese pot pie on a stick? Just $1.99 for a limited time only? We were just at a seminar. Uh, buddy, this is my... Her husband. Orange Mocha Frappuccino! <laughs> we are the keepers of the Continuum Test Functioner. And we want to pump you up. It is now my great pleasure to present to you our wise and powerful leader, Chuck B. <laughs> Over the Atlantic, bounce the signal down into the Azores, up the Comptat 6, beam it back to SATCOM 2 transponder number 137, and down to the dish in the back of Mr. Pig's limo. It's almost too easy. Give me the whip. Throw me the idol. We need your help. <laughs> 